Hey everyone, Josh Ring here. Welcome back to my four score mini series where I'm diving deep into various features about reading music from an iPad. Today I wanted to talk about annotation mode in four score, where this is the ability to write on the iPad so that markings appear on our score. So today we're gonna to talk about all the tools and tricks to do that successfully. And before we begin, I just wanted to give you a free gift for hanging out with me today. This is my music theory survival guide. Just go to joshring.com slash free. It has a lot of great features about understanding music and music theory so that you can create better music, believe in yourself, and share your gifts with others. So let's begin learning more about annotation mode. All right, so with annotation mode, there are four ways to enter annotation mode to, to start being able to write in your music. So one, if you hold down on the screen, you can have your annotation mode pop up. So now we have this bar at the top that lets us write in the score. Uh, another way, if you have an Apple Pencil, you just start writing. And whatever your last used tool was, that'll start marking up your score, which is really handy so that it feels like a, a real pencil as you're working. You don't have to suddenly do anything. Uh, two other ways. At the top of your screen, uh, you just tap anywhere on the screen to pull up the menu or make it go away. On the top right, there's this squiggle to the left of the magnifying glass. If you tap that, you'll enter annotation mode. And while I'm here, if you tap and hold on that button, you can choose another kind of shortcut. If you, there's something else that you'd rather have there, you can have that pop up there, since there's an, quite a few ways to have annotation mode enter. And then the last way, if you ever forget, go to your toolbox. And under edit the score, right at the top is annotation mode. And actually, if you tap and hold, this learn more will button will appear. So if you ever are forgetting what you might be able to do in Foursquare, this is a great place to learn more about annotation mode and read about it. Uh, so that's a fourth way to enter annotation mode. If any uh, of those don't work for you, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom in the toolbox, at the very bottom is settings. Once you pull up settings, kind of in the middle, is this gestures. So if you pop open gestures, uh, you can double check that what you have set up uh, is gonna pull up annotation mode. So uh, kind of near the middle of the screen, tap and hold it. Right now it's set to annotation mode by default. So if that for some reason is not working for you to tap and hold to pull up annotation mode, that's uh, what you can do. So actually talking about annotation mode itself, I'm gonna work from the left to the right of the menu bar here. First thing, these three lines, if the menu's ever anywhere, you can move it up and down. It'll stay wherever you want it to. Uh, I usually like it at the top or bottom of my screen, but there are times when I need to write at the top of the screen, so I'm gonna move it down so I can do that easily. Uh, the X at the top left cancels anything you've been working on. Other things at the top, we have the page forward and back buttons. So you can move forward and back that way. And then the check says, I'm done, I'm good to go. Let's save whatever I've done. Now at the second row at the left, we have, right now it's a flat for me. So if you tap that, you can enter flats wherever you'd like on the score. And if you want to take your time, you can uh, hold and tap and it'll get this magnifying glass to make sure it's at the right spot that you want it. If you want a different stamp, if you go back to the flat at the top of the page, you can open up these different stamps and you can see the ones in red are the ones I use the most often. So let's say I wanna use sharps instead, I can now input my sharps. Again, tapping and holding brings up the magnifying glass so you can position it exactly where you want it. Personally, I like to have these in red. So if there's another stamp, right now they're, they're set to black by default. If you tap on the color in the bottom, right of the screen, you can pull up and you can now change something to red. And if you want, you can move the the stamp box around. I'm tapping and holding on the bottom right of that screen. You can also uh, make them all colorless if you tap that a little paintbrush. And you can change the size of the stamp by this little bar I'm sliding around. All right, so those are very helpful. I use, again, just the flats, sharps, and naturals the most myself, but there are some other good ones in there you might use. Related to stamps are these little shapes. And again, you can kind of tell from the red which ones I use the most, but if I wanted a crescendo or diminuendo or a slur for some reason, right, I could use those. And again, you can change the color by tapping on the color at the side of it. All right, so some other useful things. Uh, the bulk of what you're going to do in annotation mode are these markers that I have. So here I can write whatever I want in the score. 
you know, whether that be a pen like that or I have a highlighter like this I could use. To create more pens and highlighters, you're gonna tap and hold on the markers and you're gonna scroll all the way till you see this plus symbol. And this will allow you to create a new one. And so this is really nice. You can change up what color you want it to be. Uh, and you can change, oh, I want it to be really big. Uh, and then the other one that I mess with the most often is transparency. This is, so this is a way you can get like a highlighter. If there's something that you wanna still see the music, uh, but you wanna remind yourself about maybe the change in time signature or something, you can do that. And then you can, if you ever wanna edit something, you just tap on it, right? With those three dots under it, that usually means you can tap it. Uh, and then at the bottom here, you can have the delete with the trash can or you can duplicate. Let's say you really liked the, the size and the shape of it, you can go back and now you can change maybe the color of it and then change your transparency again as well. All right, so let me talk you through some ideas uh, so to get you started with some ideas for annotating well. Personally, anything that I write in the score, usually I like it to be a color. If it's black, sometimes I don't notice it. Uh, I only have this black pen because sometimes I need to write in uh, a ledger line or a staff that got deleted. Uh, so usually I like colors. So just some ideas. Let me clear the screen out. And that's with this trash can over here. So if you're sure, I'm going to clear it. All right, I don't need any of those things I was working with. So uh, personally, I have different colors mean different things for me. So for example, if I want to do something with tempo, I'm going to use green. And for me, squiggles like this mean slow down, whereas an arrow means speed up. I just like something quick and easy as people are talking. There's not a lot of time. I also want to mark quickly what I'm going to do with tempo, and I can move forward or back as necessary. Um, for me, uh, yellow is like, oh, don't forget this, or oh, there's something difficult popping up. Uh, just something to remind me that uh, I got to watch out. If it's something major, maybe I'll, I'll mark it in red. But usually with red is when I'm like cutting out some measures. I'll use my big red pen, and then I'll use the highlighter in, in between. Other things I might do, uh, I use highlighters to remind me what keyboard I'm playing on when I'm playing organ, but you might use these big highlighters to tell you other things that might be useful for you. Um, or if you'd rather, you know, do your crescendo and diminuendo, you can use those instead of your shapes that you had earlier. Uh, last really useful thing is to have some white options. So here, let's say I don't want to play that low D anymore. I'm just going to white those out. Now they're gone. Or these chord symbols, maybe those are annoying to me now. So I'm going to white out those. And so it's kind of a way to erase something that's not normally erasable. So I have a, a thick one and a thin one for erasing. And the last is I have this transparency thing. So let's say there's something, I'm not going to play it anymore, but it's nice to have as maybe a cue or something so I can mark that. And I can kind of see that it's there, but it, it shows me that I don't have to play that. And I don't have to worry about that. Uh, so useful things to have at your disposal. All right, so next we have the ruler, which is this little rectangle box I have. If you tap and hold, you can move it up and down. And what this allows you to do is draw in a straight line. So if you use another writing tool, you can position the ruler where you want. And as you're writing, it won't go past that line, that ruler that you have. If you tap and hold with two fingers, you can even rotate this so you can draw another straight line, whatever you need to do on either side of the ruler there. A common thing that might happen in Fourscore is these half page turns. And this allows you to still see the bottom of the first page before you go on to the next page, which is really useful if you are a solo instrumentalist and you have a long rest or something, you have some time. The nice thing about half page turns is that you can choose where the page turn is going to occur. Let's say you only need uh, to see the top of the page and you have some, some rests that you can work with. So you, you might circle something and say, oh, that's where you're going to turn your page. You have some rest, you have some time. Well, what I like to do with the ruler then is I like to remind myself that that's maybe where my page turn is going to happen. So I might put the ruler there, highlight where the page turn's happening. So I say, oh, that's a useful place to then turn the page. If, uh, maybe the next page has a, uh, I only need the page turn to happen at the bottom of the screen. I can mark exactly where that's going to happen. Uh, so as I'm working along, I know, oh, the page turn is going to be at the top there. Oh, this next page, the page turns now at the bottom. Another great use of the ruler is when you have multiple lines of text like this and you don't necessarily need to see all three. So you're gonna maybe use the ruler to erase the other version. So I'm using my white pen. Let's get rid of some text and I can easily go through and have 
just the one line I need versus the original three that were there. I think it's much nicer with just the one there. All right, so besides the ruler, then next we have this uh, selection mode. So I can circle something, and then what's ever inside the box, I can say I'm going to move that around. And if you tap on your selection, you have the options to duplicate, you have copy, you have paste, you can even mess with the settings. So you want them to be different colors as you're working along, right? So a very useful way. And anything that has three dots under it, you can change the selection or edit what you're going to use with that tool. Uh, so for example, then we have the eraser over here. So if I'm going to erase something, you see those three dots, so I can tap on the eraser again. Now I can change how big is my eraser going to be. Is it really tiny or is it really big as I'm going along? So pretty useful. Uh, so the other thing we have is this then text tool. If the keyboard doesn't pop up, down in the bottom is this keyboard icon. So you can choose to show or hide the keyboard as you need to. Uh, so maybe I'm going to say something like not too fast which is pretty helpful to write in something because I don't know about you, I don't have the best handwriting sometimes on this. So if I want to be really clear uh, about it, I can do that. So then if I get out of the keyboard, then I can choose to maybe move it around. I didn't position it in the right spot. If I want to edit it, I can tap on it and again, and I can mess with it that way. If I tap on the three dots, I can choose to format it. So maybe I want a different font, different size, different color. I can do that kind of a thing there. And let's say I, I don't need this anymore because sometimes I think, oh, I'll just use the eraser. And so I'm trying to erase it right now and nothing's happening. But if I go back to the keyboard mode, I can tap on the three dots and at the bottom here we have delete. So that's a way to get rid of your markings. So we talked about the eraser. We also have then the clear. So anything that you've marked up will clear that. Uh, of course, we have then the backwards and forwards things. So we can redo or undo from there. On the very right is the layers, which is a really, really useful tool. So layers allows me to have something in a specific layer. So let's say in layer one, I have uh, a nice one. And layer two, maybe I'm going to have a nice two. Uh, so right now, both layers are visible because of this little eye. And if I tap on the eye, suddenly that layer is no longer visible. So now only layer two is visible, or maybe only layer one is visible. So the reason this is so helpful, let's say you have different students, maybe you're going to have different markings for each student as you are working with them. Maybe you are going to play in a chamber ensemble or a duet. Maybe you're going to have different partners. So you're going to have different markings for different people you play with. Personally, I use them a lot to have one layer is going to be my fingerings. So let's say I'm working in layer one. And again, you have to tap on the layer. Whatever one is the darker color is the active layer. So let's say I'm going to clear the active layer. And let's say in layer one, I'm going to have my fingerings. So I like to have them maybe I'll do one to five. I'll go down to three, four. OK, I already have the one there before going to five. So I have my fingerings in layer one. And let's say I get really comfortable. I don't need to see my fingerings anymore. So I can get those out of the way so the score is a little cleaner. All right, so that's useful to have musical markings versus like fingering markings as more technical markings. Uh, I also, when I was working on my CD, I had all my musical markings in one layer. And then on the second layer, I would use it to mark up, oh, in the recording I listened back, that, that wasn't great. I need to re-record that or this was perfect. Let's move on kind of thing. Uh, so I didn't have to have those on all the time when I wanted to go back and actually perform from the score. Uh, one last thing I forgot to mention is that if you have a, a Generation 2 Apple Pencil, if you double tap on it, it'll change from the current tool to the eraser. And you have some settings to mess with that, how you want it to work. Personally, I have, I have an old Generation 1 Apple Pencil, so I don't get to use that feature, which is why I don't think of it often. Uh, so again, the check mark at the top says we're done. We're happy. We can go back to performing. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you have any questions about annotation mode, for score, or just anything about the iPad in general that you want to know more about, just let me know in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and before you leave, just thanks again for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to grab your free music theory survival guide. Go to joshring.com free. Thanks, guys.